It's raining. Uh, she, I don't think she likes rain. The lock's very deep anyway, and it's full of cabins, so she probably goes there at night. I should have to try again tomorrow morning. We're down at Loch Ness this morning. The weather is lighter because the sun has come up. Has it? Kind of limited here. Um, so we're just going to look at some of the foreground stuff we might be able to work with. There's some old brickwork around, that sort of thing. We'll try and work with that. See what the lenders can pull out, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when you visit somewhere like Scotland, it's beautiful everywhere. So when you find somewhere that's not quite that photogenic, you're kind of like, ugh. Yeah. But realistically, we don't have to go far down the road and we'll find something. So. Yeah, exactly. So we've just done a complete swap of lenses. Mike has given Chris his 25mm, I've now got the 40 Mike's using the 135. Now the 40mm I wanted to get my hands on, especially somewhere like this, because it's a really close focusing lens. So as you can see, there's a little switch on the side here, we can go from full focus to uh, 0.4 metres to infinity, or 0.24 to 0.5. So you can get down to 0.24, so 24 centimetres effectively. When I'm using macro, I immediately put it into manual focus mode, just to see, just to look at how close I can get, so I sort of get a feel for the lens, because I've not really used the 40mm much, and it is blimmin' close. Exactly 24 centimetres, as it said. Oh, it's weird how you know that. It's weird, isn't it? As it says. It's weird how things work out. I just, I don't know how I knew it, it's just like intuition, I'm not, like, magic or, yeah, or anything. Nothing to do with that writing on the side. What writing? The Batis range kind of has three pillars, which is 3D pop, true colour and sharpness and it can be difficult to kind of show the true colour on a drab day like this but I found some birds pottering around behind me I've knelt down in the grass I've managed to blow out the grass and I've managed to get some sharp shots of the birds as they potter around and obviously that's the great thing about prime lenses is their sharpness are second to none Things were getting a little bit too dismal where we were before, so we've come down the edge of Loch Ness, we drove over this bridge, it looks absolutely magical here, we're just in some random village, so we've stopped, parked up, and we're gonna take some pictures here of this beautiful river. This is a pretty epic bit of river. We've come down off the bridge, just found our way under. I've stuck the 18 mil on, so I wanna just get as much as I can in this. Because I'm using the A7R 3 does mean I can really heavily crop. And these ice lenses are great for that because if you are using them with a super high resolution camera like the a7R 3 a lot of lenses struggle, you start to see issues at the edges, you're starting to see that maybe their glass performance isn't as good. With these, and I've been looking back through the images in the evenings, they are built for that high resolution performance. So in a situation like this, I'd rather shoot a little bit wider than I can crop in if I have to. We've just arrived at Glencoe, we've had a real speedy meal at the hotel and now we're down at the lock and it is beautiful and this is perhaps the, well of course, this is the best sun, the best light that we've had all through this trip. Um, so I don't really want to be speaking right now, I want to be like Amy behind me and get some snaps so uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've just been using the big stopper with the 18 wheel, I've just passed that over to Mike so he can get a few shots before we lose the light completely. However, although this is obviously stunning and I want to get a billion photos of it, actually long exposure, or I've always found long exposure looks a little bit better when the sun's sort of gone. You've sort of got that lasting colour and then hopefully we can just get the hues. I can do nice long exposures where the light is far more balanced throughout the landscape rather than thinking actually I'm going to have to take this home and do a lot of shadows and highlights. So I've now spotted some pink light over there, the sun's setting that way, and um, it's casting really nice light on the mountains here. So the good thing about coming away with people is not only the amazing company, really? <laughs> um, but that you can use them. It's very silhouetted, we're losing the light, but it's got to that stage where you're either very, very bright, very, very silhouetted. So we just need something like a little bit more interesting. So I've had Chris go down to the edge of the lot. Mike spoke about it earlier. The lenses are very good at, they call it 3D pop, which basically means it can pull the subject out of the scene. But even with the 18 mil, it's noticeable when Chris was standing there, it pulled him away from the scene, it just creates a little bit more depth in the image. The 
this morning we're at the Glen Finnan Viaduct. It's actually the Harry Potter Viaduct that they go over in the Hogwarts Express. And we're about to see the Hogwarts Express, that's not the real name of the train, come over that viaduct behind me. I've come up the hill with Chris, he's using the 40 mil, I've got the 135 and the 18 mil. Mike is further down the hill, he's looking at the viaduct from the other side, and he's got the 25 and the 85 mil. So glad that I managed to get the 135 on there. Just meant I'd set up the perfect shot. We'd waited here for quite a while so that when the train did come over the bridge, I was able to focus and uh, carry on that continuous focus with that 135 of the big diesel train that was attached to the front of the attractive steam train. Why? Uh... Why? Why is this a thing? Nice weather though. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? So as we were driving through this beautiful mountain pass, we spotted this waterfall behind me, and now we're gonna go and scale it. Ready? Yes. We made it to the top! Yay! It's very, very cold. There's quite a lot of spray, because we're in Scotland, so the spray is just blowing like a constant gale. However, Zeiss lenses are weather resistant. I, I'm not holding one though, because I'm not an idiot. I'm in a pool of water. Uh, something I was going to say about these lenses is, um, you know, they just work seamlessly with the A7R III. Um, you know, obviously there's ice and they're third party, but, you know, really brilliant to use. Before we head back to the car to put on so much heating to get over the ice bath that was the team photo we just took, I've come up the hill a little bit to take a look at the waterfall, looking down into the pool we were just in. It's got a really nice bluish hue, and because these lenses pick out colour from a scene so well, I'm just going to try and see if I can grab that before we go. We're back at the Edinburgh store after our epic road journey around Scotland, and we've got all the lenses with us that unfortunately we have to give back, because I think all of us have grown to like using them quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, lovely lenses. What do you have to say about this? Because obviously we haven't heard anything from you behind the camera. Because I've been doing the majority of the work behind the scenes all on the this work, trip. All the work, the sarcastic comments. we all agree on oh, that. Scotch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just no, I mean, I'd echo what you guys have said in terms of the characteristics of the, uh, the lenses. They're beautiful, really lovely to use. Um, there's two points that I'd want to make for, you know, for filmmaking. Um, the focusing systems on these lenses uh, work really well. Often with stills-based lenses, they use fly-by-wire focusing systems. Yeah. You can often feel a bit detached from it, um, but with these ones, it almost feels organic, it almost feels like it is mechanical. Yeah. And what's really nice as well is that across the range of these Batis lenses, that focusing system works the same, it's very consistent, so you're not, you're not having to adapt each time you change lenses when you're trying to pull focus. That's high praise from you as well, because you don't like using you don't like fly-by-wire, like, yeah. and, ever. Uh, you can have the same manufacturer with you know, a range of lenses and each lens behaves differently when it comes to focusing, yeah. which is really annoying, uh, especially for running good shooting. One other thing I'd say is that, which is quite unique to these lenses, is they have a little OLED screen on the top. Now, that screen yes. is super useful because what it does, it tells you your aperture that you're shooting at, but when you're pulling focus, it'll also tell you the minimum and maximum focus distance that yeah. you've got to work with. So if you're doing gimbal work and you're not using autofocus, you know exactly yeah. how much room you've got for your subject to move and how you can keep them That's in focus. That's hugely yeah. powerful for video. Really it's really good, it's really good. How did you find lenses? It was great fun. I think the 25 was my favourite. And yeah. I think one of the things I really like about them is um, in camera it looks great. You know, the contrast looks really good. Um, and I can't wait to get home and edit them. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that even at narrow apertures, you know, I'm, I'm seeing just sharpness throughout. Yeah, that's um, true. You can use them at the yeah. minimum apertures and they're, they're fine. Yeah. And let's not forget that little blue and white Zeiss tag on the lens. I quite like that. I quite like walk around with that. Show off. Yeah. It's not all about the label, Mike. I think for me, the, the 135 I think would have been my favourite if I'd been doing more portraiture because yeah. the way that 3D pop thing they talk about, it does, it does separate the subject yeah. in the image. Yeah, it is fine. Yeah, again, 85, exactly the same. But in the type of environment we were in, I think I used the 18 most just because we've got high resolution cameras. You can rely on those lenses to make the most of the high resolution of the camera. You know, high resolution lenses, edge to edge sharpness. So if I put the 18 mil on, I know if I want to, actually, I'll just crop it down a bit, it'll be all right. Yeah. Like still a completely usable You've image. Got that flexibility. Yeah, yeah, which is really, really good. But I think the most important thing we've, you know, thought about on this trip is the fact that Mike never got to see the Loch Ness <laughs> monster. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, it's been cold, hasn't it? No, yeah, shot horror. It's been cold. 
it, the Loch Ness Monster is probably a reptile. I mean, it's pretty much always cold in Scotland, yeah, so Scotland. how is anyone That's why seen there's it? not many pictures. Mm, that's why, yeah. Yes. That's where we went wrong. Well, that makes sense. Anyway, where are we going next? I was thinking Mongolia. Oh, for like eagle hunters? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to try and photograph the abominable snowman.